Geography is knowing about the earth and describing it. Cartography is drawing how that earth looks to us now. Carto and logos again means knowing about a map. Carta being one of the words for a map because a lot of countries didn't even have a word for a map. Um, whereas geographos actually means writing about the world. Geo being um, the world, the earth, and graphos meaning writing about it. quite appalled that children in England are not taught where places are. They may be taught about, perhaps about agriculture in certain places, about um, different people living in different places, but they're rarely taught, it seems now, about where places are. Which to me means they're not learning geography properly. I know everyone now in England uses sat-nav in their car, for one thing, that distracts your eyes from looking at the road, so it's dangerous. But hardly anyone in England now can understand a map. So they, they rely on sat-nav. They don't know anything to right or left of the main road they're on, which is what the map directs them to follow. And they learn very little about the country all around them. In a map of 1507, which is one of the first world maps to be printed, there was an earlier one in 1502, which had the Ptolemaic shape of India without a peninsula, and also an extra peninsula beside it to report the Portuguese discoveries. But the more detailed one, which had the modern peninsula, and that is the one that shows Bengal and Tibet up in North China because Marco Polo had mentioned them and didn't say where they were. So the cartographer had to uh, put them somewhere on the map and that's where he put them. Uh, there are so many other discrepancies like that. Um, there's a, a manuscript map um, showing the river Ganges as a straight line north to south down to the Bay of Bengal and the words beside it say um, Ganges River, end of India. The British East India Company was formed on the last day of 1600 and they sent out William Hawkins to try and get trade and on the way on the ship on the way home in 1619 the first mate was William Baffin so he and Rowe made this map on the voyage home and it shows it doesn't have the peninsula but it shows all North India and that was copied for more than a hundred years by other cartographers mm -hmm. with a little addition as they found more. Mercator mm -hmm. projection, he developed it, it was a huge advance because it is the only projection which allows a, a, a ship's captain to sail in a straight line of where he wants to go. And that was not possible before, because the Earth is curved. And it was the Mercator projection which allowed this to happen. Regardless of which country is large or which country is small. So that's why it was so popular for a, a very long time. It was very useful. Mm -hmm. Now you can change the projection and say it's not right that <coughs> Europe should be... Why should Europe always be in the center of a world map? And some... Uh, I've seen a map with Australia in the center. Some of the uh, maps from the further east have China in the center. So this is a convention that has grown up because it was the Europeans who were making the maps at that time. He needs to know the direction of the sun, presuming it's not overcast with cloud. So he needs to know the, where does the sun rise? So once you know that, if you have an idea of the shape of where you are in the country, which is doubtful now that younger children will have when they grow up, um, then you can follow the, the course of the sun 
allowing for it to be moving across the skies. And eventually, if you can keep to the sun in, in the right direction, you will land up north, south, east or west, wherever you want to go. I think that probably is the only way to, in an absolute desert, to, to find your way out. Because I think it's probably a Norman human thing to go around in circles, which won't help. Thank <laughs> you.